Fall is coming, and boy am I sad. 2020 has been horrible. This year I was supposed to be covering some great rallies, and that all went to hell. Thanks, COVID-19. So, let's talk about why do outlaw bikers only ride Harley Davidsons or American only bikes? This is a question I get a whole lot of and thought it was time to address the subject. Simple answer, World War II. Many of our vets who fought Germany, Italy, and Japan came home from fighting and got in the motorcycling. Harley-Davidson was an American company, it was cheap, and it was a source of pride for those vets. Motorcycles made by the Axis Powers were a no-touch deal. This attitude propelled the ideal, Harley-Davidson is what you need in order to join an outlaw motorcycle club. The ideal that you have to have a Harley-Davidson to be a biker in a club propagated even more through the years because of the only nice people ride Hondas. It also didn't help with the supposed AMA statement about outlaw bikers, but that in itself is another subject. Now, fast forward to 2020. Thinking on this subject has changed much with the passage of time and the new generations of bikers coming into the scene. I, for one, am not a Harley Davidson cheerleader, meaning I don't believe someone must own a Harley Davidson to be considered a biker. I believe Harley is less superior to many of the bikes coming out of Japan, Germany, and even England. The attitude is shared by many people in the scene, one of them famously being Sonny Barger. And here's what he had to say. In terms of pure workmanship, personally I don't like Harleys. I ride them because I'm in a club, and that's the image. Notice he said image. But if I could, I would seriously consider riding a Honda ST1100 or a BMW. We really missed the boat not switching over to the Japanese models when they began building bigger bikes. I'll usually say fuck Carly Davidson. Eventually, some of the old school outlaws got a little tamer, some died, some went to jail. Harley realized that they can capitalize on the rebel image and sell it to middle-aged people who want to feel a bit more alive than their office job would let them. Harley became the ride of the rub, the rich urban biker. The remaining outlaw stuck to Harley pretty much because of tradition and lack of other US-made bikes. Again, attitudes are changing, and rightly so. To be honest, I actually started in the lifestyle thinking that Harley was the best and only bike I would ever ride. Now, my favorite bike is my Suzuki Boulevard. It's pretty funny, I know. I'm shooting this monologue or motovlog on my fat boy. But my favorite is my Boulevard. The reason my Boulevard is my favorite is because the ride is much smoother, has more power, and it doesn't beat me up on a long ride. To be fair, my fat boy is an 01. New models of Harley could be better rides, but my fat boy will be the last Harley I ever owned because I believe the company lost its way and I'm not interested in supporting them any longer. With that said, and going back to why outlaw bikers prefer Harleys, there are as many outlaw bikers on chat bikes as there is on any other. Overseas bikers do not believe you have to have a Harley. Even those that are part of the big 1% clubs do not ride Harleys. This could be attributed to the price of Harleys or 
that particular country's culture. Personally, I think clubs are excluding a lot of people who could be great potential brothers just because of what they ride. I always say, if you're in a bar and get into some trouble, will that brother who rides a Honda help you? Or that Harley parked outside? When I put it that way, people say, hey, you're right. The person and not the bike matters. We still have many Harley Davidson cheerleaders who will never change their minds. Those people aside, I believe within the next decade, the thinking you need a Harley will be all gone. Being into all two wheels, there's such more out there than Harley Davidson. I say, if you're truly in love with the lifestyle, get out there and open your minds to other makes of motorcycles. If you don't, you're just selling yourself short in my opinion. One thing I like about riding clubs, they usually don't care what you ride. The only thing that matters is you ride. I believe this is the way it should be and one of the reasons why I support riding clubs over most MCs. Riding clubs bring people together to ride their motorcycles and still share in the brotherhood an MC might have. Let's not forget, riding clubs most of the time are not into all the political drama that comes along with being in a motorcycle club. I belong to both a motorcycle club and a riding club. I love the riding club, mainly because the motorcycle club was more like a second job. When you have to feel like you have a second job and pay out money for a bunch of headaches, this isn't the way to go. I believe the reasons people like to get into motorcycle clubs is because of the reputation and feeling of importance. Motorcycle clubs are all the rage. Hell, you even have people making pages on social media claiming to know which club is good and which club is a pop-up. It's freaking high school with a bunch of girls running off at the mouth. Who wants to be a part of something like that? Something I've seen since I've started with the show on HarleyLiberty.com is people are shying away from MCs and going the RC route. I think many people are thinking the negatives outweigh the positives when it comes to an MC. This thinking I've got to agree with. I, for one, know I'd rather enjoy the lifestyle than have to feel it's a second job. I'm also too old for all the drama that comes with it. When people ask me what they should join or what they should start, I always tell them the first get involved with an already established MC or RC if one's near you. If this isn't possible, I always tell them to go the one piece patch RC route. Most new motorcycle clubs do not even last five years. This is why you go with the established MC and earn your patch. There's nothing better than earning a patch. You get a sense of accomplishment and pride in what you're being a part of. If you join an RC club, you have to remember what you're joining. Problems start to happen when RCs lose their way. RCs get in trouble because they act like MCs. RCs are not MCs and shouldn't be portrayed as such. Many RCs, all you have to do is pay and then you're a member. MCs, a person has to earn their colors. Don't use an RC as a springboard to try and get around protocol because it usually doesn't work out very well. Some would be asking about now, what are examples of an RC? Well, it depends what you're into. I've done interviews with the Moose Riders who are members of the Loyal Order of Moose. They are a good riding club that focuses on charity. There's BACA, or Bikers Against Child Abuse. They focus on helping victims of child abuse, of course. Those are just two examples of the many hundred that are out there. My advice is to look around and see what best fits you. 
So you, there you have it. I gave you some information on why outlaw bikers ride Harley Davidsons and the benefits of joining a riding club. Hopefully you got some good information out of this video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit the notification bell so you know when I post to the channel. Join me Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. for Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem for your news happening in the scene. And also on my other YouTube channel, The Hollywood and China Doll Evening Show. Thanks for watching. Rock on. Thank you.